Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to our nice office space here at the Um <clears throat> So, let me tell you how you know, this came about. Basically, our recruiting team asked me, hey, how long would you like to do a keynote for this event? I'm like, well, maybe, I guess. I've never talked about this before, at least in front of such a large audience. Let me think about it. Actually, let me take a step back. Um, I introduce myself. So, my name is Alan. I am the lead of consumer engineering at our firm. Here you see me with my two year old daughter um, at the beach. And this is the only picture I have of her, which is actually somewhat smiling. <laughs> and as it turns out, she doesn't like cold water and she doesn't like sand in her toes. So, I'm like, well, the beach isn't exactly the best place for her. And, well, Put her up here. Um, there's actually another person, my five-year-old son. And, and the reason I bring them up is because they were actually, as I was sitting at the kitchen table over the weekend trying to think about what I want to talk about and uh, the idea of career management, the idea of career growth, um, he was actually the guy that inspired me to think a little bit about it and to use it in knowledge. And specifically, his name is Edison. He's five years old. A week ago, he just started kindergarten. And, and it turns out he really likes maps. And he doesn't like maps the way that maybe the rest of us thinks about maps, like you kind of follow this giant map of kind of the world and you kind of see where things are. No, the maps that he knows is actually Google Maps. Um, which is basically the navigation system in the car. You pick where you are, you pick where you're going, it maps are out for you and you go. He really is into that for some reason. And, and, and a couple of years ago when he first um, learned how to pick up he started drawing maps all over the house. Um, I, at, at our house, we have a few hundred um, sheets of paper. Often, just drawing maps all over the place. It's like 10 seconds, he draws on a map, and daddy, here we go. And I'm like, what is this thing mean? Um, but he really likes it. And, and then, you know, as I was sitting at the kitchen table with this giant stack of paper next to me, of all the maps that he's drawn in the past couple of days, I'm like, you know what? This is not a bad way to think about, you know, a framework, a mental framework for people to think about how, how you should think about your career. So I would like to present this, which is a way to think about your career, you know, analogous to how you think about mapping a route, think about getting to a destination. And I've broken that into four, four distinct parts, right? There is introspection, there's alignment, there's learnings, and there's reflection. Now, you think about, hey, how do I advance my career? How do I plan out my career? The most obvious one is how this study. It's about, like, how do I learn, basically, you know, how do I learn to be a better manager? How do I learn from the next level of management? But I actually think the other steps are also really, really important. And in as much as I will have used this analogy, and to it no longer makes any sense, I do want to dig a little bit deeper into each of these various steps so that, you know, we can kind of think about it and, and see how comfortable this applies. Starting the second with introspection. So, for me, thinking, introspecting about, is really about thinking about where you are right now. Also think about where you want to go. And as it turns out, you know, even though the this the, the title for this meetup is optimizing for your career flow, um, this very famous computer science quote is that premature optimization is to your knowledge, right? Which is basically you shouldn't optimize if you don't know exactly where it is that you're going. So it's actually pretty important to figure out where it is that you're going, right? Where in your chart do you eventually want to stay, right? Does it make sense if you want to be an engineering someday? What does that actually mean, right? If you want to be a CTO someday, what does that actually mean? How far do you want to be removed from the code, right? If you're technically thinking about being an engineering manager or vice versa. I think it's actually really important to you know, understand where you are right now, where is that you want to go, and make sure that where is that you want to go is actually in the place that you want to be. So an amount of introspection is necessary. Uh, just to even chart a path, right? Chart a reasonable path to get from point A to point B. That's introspection. Secondly, let's talk a little bit about alignment, which is like picking a path, right? So, you know, to use Google Maps, you know, when you chart, when you ask from point A to point B, it gives you a bunch of options. Well, how do you want to get from point A to point B? And here's the track, you know, the various commuting options, and here's the various routes that you take. And there might be some traffic and other things along the way, right? You pick a path and we start going. Again, this is not a perfect analogy. Right? The way I think about alignment is really setting expectations with the people around me. Uh, this is a map that my son has brought. Um, and he's done a pretty decent job of setting expectations, right? The route is 
there's only one route that's going to take 15 minutes, and it's you and Java's going to be fast. I try to explain some that it's not legal to Java for 15 minutes, but um, I realized that he hasn't learned what decimals are, so it actually should be four emails, but I try to explain to me this has to learn how to do this, so basically it's kind of a lost cause. But the point is that you should not set expectations with the people around you, right? Whether it is your manager, whether it is trying to find alignment from what it is that you value versus what your team, your organization, and your company values, right? It's really about setting kind of the expectations of how you want to get there and the path that you want to get there. Make sure that you actually have the right support structure around you. Um, I'm going to tell a quick story here about um, when I first got into management as a tech lead. Uh, what I ran into was kind of this misalignment, and I didn't realize that at the time. You know, I was working doubly hard at first, kind of doing the technical work, and then secondly, trying to do management stuff. At the end of the quarter, when I was asking my manager, hey, um, do you think it's time to promote me into management because I've been doing so much work for this team and doing so much project management and the rest of it? They went, well, I know you did all that and stuff, but the code that you did isn't quite to the level that I want you to do, and therefore, you know, I, I can't reward you for that. And, and then at that point, I realized that, well, and it turned out, all this extra stuff I was doing basically didn't catch up, right? It wasn't part of the value system of that particular team, that particular manager at this point in time. So it made me realize, actually, this alignment is actually one of the most important ways for you to make sure that what you're doing, the things that you're learning, the things that you're building upon, are things that are going to be the ones, the things that propel your career forward. So that is really just about setting expectations and setting alignment. Step three, learning, right? And here I put, you know, the, tra the, the mass analogy is finding the traffic. Here's another map that my son drew, and this one. Um, he, here he learned about, so you see the destination marker. You also see there's a little bit of red because there's slow down. Um, and I told him that, well, whenever you have red like that, it's probably the Bay Bridge. This is always the Bay Bridge. But, so I mean, I slow down, right? This is what happens in a career in charting the path, right? Not everything is going to be, you know, a straight line that everything's going to be green, right? You are going to face slowdowns. You are going to face things coming along not as fast as you would like. Sometimes you even face progressions, you mean things that you know you've already done and you've already done a good job of. And I think that's perfectly fine. Again, it's really about charting your career. And you know, going back to how you optimize and not optimize, not everything is going to be perfect. And but the process of learning is really being able to try to be the different times. Um, this is the only slide I have here where I'll actually recommend I'll call it and recommend specific resources. Um, both the manager's path and the leadership pipeline, I think are really the books that I've read in the past year or two that talk you know, not only about kind of the art of management, but also the sense of at each level of management, what is that in more detail, what is that you expect, right? For the folks who have ever heard of the idea that, hey, the difference between being a manager and a manager of managers, there's actually a substantial difference. Well, what does that actually entail? These books will actually give some comments around that. So again, this is actually the only slide where I will dive into actual kind of recommendations instead of kind of abstract thinking um, in high level terms. And then the, the very last one, um, the very last here is really the reflection of it, right? Which is at the end of the day, after you figure out where you want to go, um, after you've done the learning, after you've kind of done the work necessary, well, reflect on it, right? Like figure out, and in the same way, there is nothing noble, there is nothing more being superior to your fellow man. True nobility is being superior to your former self, right? That is enabling growth basically means to grow and to kind of grow upon your past selves, right? To build, to build upon what you learned previously, and that's how you basically get better and better over time, right? The, the you know, like the, so when I, when I talk to folks, and, and you know, folks will come talk to me and say, I have X amount of business experience being a manager in these particular areas, and, and I ask myself, well, are these X years of experience the same year of experience five times over, or is it five years of of growth enough experience that kind of builds upon itself. And another way I thought about it, again, this is us being on the beach. And you know, the, the this is this is the way sand castles. Um, I, well there's some of them but this is some of them song. Um, and, and you actually see the ones in the background and the background they're kind of being lopsided, not quite right. You kept on sticking the little wooden sticks into it and they kept on falling apart, right? And it got better and better over time, right? It is to be the, the ability to be able to learn the, the things that initially start out as very difficult, as very challenging, you do it enough times and you kind of learn from it, it actually becomes easy. And I would actually argue that at a certain point, actually, you wanted to get to a point where the 
the heart becomes the trivial, right? The heart becomes something that you don't actually think too much about, you just want to execute. And actually, that frees up the mental energy necessary to kind of pick up the next global events, right? If you make it trivial, then, then you can kind of tackle the next challenge, right? You can tackle, you can improve yourself in that way. So, putting that all together, right? It's like, you start with introspection, figuring out where it is that you want to go. You create alignment with the people around you, with your organization, with your company. Make sure that everybody understands where it is that you want to go. You can cancel between that journey, right? You learn the actual like, skills. You actually learn the tactics and everything needed for you to get there. And then at the end of it, you reflect on, oh, hey, this is what I did. You know, what I learned, what applies, what doesn't apply. And I can kind of build on it for myself from here on out. And put all that together, and that's basically, you know, being able to map around where it is that you want to go. I'm doing pretty good for time, I think. So, from, with that, I will actually go to Q&A. But all right, so, the top two seem like the ones that got the most books. So, let's start with the top one. What are some tips for managers who still want to remain hands on the technology while moving up in their leadership positions? So, one answer I've heard to, to answer this is, hey, just code in your spare time, basically. Code on nice and weekends. Um, since you guys know that I have two kids, I would very much prefer not to do that. Um, uh, so, how, you know, how else do you want to remain hands on in technology? I think that that's a really, really good question. Again, it becomes one of these things where if you identify where you want to go and where that actually becomes really, really difficult, it's not impossible for you to be able to be as hands on as you would like. Well, you ask yourself, well, are you, am I willing to make that trade off, right? There is no configuration necessarily where. I get to do everything, I get to have everything at the same time, right? Like if the trade-off, the hard trade-off, right? If you're, say, the VP of engineering for a very big organization, would you get to be hands-on without maybe sacrificing your personal time and doing other things? Maybe the answer is no, and recognize that if that is the case, then the trade-off isn't necessarily worth it, right? Go find an organization that supports you, not necessarily having a giant team under you, having new kind of demands and responsibility so that you can remain hands-on. I would actually say, like, realistically, that is, what I've seen to be most effective and actually kind of keeps people most happy, right? If you're happy being very hands-on with code, find management positions that enable you to do that, knowing that that actually might be a trade-off on the other side. It's not a satisfactory answer, but I actually think that it is, it is something that, as I kind of look at people struggling with this, actually might be a realistic answer. Um, leave it at that. Um, Again, it's not very satisfactory, even to me as I'm saying it, but I feel like it, it is the most realistic. Uh, looking at the next question. Many great opportunities only come from network, especially the more senior ones. How do you build an effective network while I am super busy? Well, you're here. That's, good. That's a pretty good start, right? Because you always thought that can't actually come in here so you can build a network. You're so bad. Um, find that, um, honestly, I'm personally very, very bad at networking. Um, I, I tend to dislike talking with people, so you would very much make an argument that like going to management was not maybe the best career choice. Um, that said, um, it's really about like, uh, you know, like going to groups like this, you know, making almost like spontaneous connections, for example, just connecting with Jerry almost very randomly, and, you know, we've been able to leverage that connection that connection ever since. Um, it's really about putting yourself out there and then like finding common ground like discussing, you know, going to communities like this, there, you know, there are Slack channels for engineering managers, for example, and then like almost going out there and reaching out and meeting, you know, taking that first step towards, hey, like, let's go grab coffee. I'm not gonna try to push you or anything. I just want to discuss things, right? I just want to talk about management. You know, you know, another cliche is well management things, you know, managers tend to be very lonely, it can be a very lonely job sometimes. And you know, finding a support network, finding other folks in other companies where there is you know almost like a mutual third party can kind of bounce ideas off of. I think actually that's pretty natural. But again, you know, if it's not natural, it doesn't feel very natural, guess what? That that's actually kind of the the, the natural state of the world is I don't think it feels natural for anybody. So it actually requires you people take the first step to be able to reach out like that. And in all the times that I've done it, all the times that people have reached out to me, I have found that you know, people are very, very responsive. And it actually just takes that initial reach out. And then hopefully from there, these really like a relationship and a, a something kind of develops from that network. Uh, that's, that's my maybe best take on talking about that. 
Oh, we have one more really anyway. So, uh, what are top three things that you try to find in an engineering manager when you interview them, and how do they help managers in advancing their career once hired? Um, that's a good question. Um, top three things that I find try to find in an engineering manager when interviewing them. Um, it's actually not too far different from the presentation that I just gave. Now, I look for the that that eternal curiosity and ability to learn and want to learn and pick things up. Again, if, if you're, you know, like the, the cliche here is having a growth mind, you know, a growth mindset, right? Feeling like, hey, over time I actually can expand in various roles and I'm not fixed in my ways. And to, trying to find those signals in an interview for me, super important, right? That's how I know that, you know, somebody can come on board as a tech lead, as an engineer, as a manager, and know they can expand over time, they can scale as the company scales up, which is another cliche I like to use, right? And, and that is what, you know, like enables somebody to be successful. Um, and, you know, another attribute that I look for is a, a degree of self-awareness, right? In order for you to be able to learn, right? And again, everybody should take their careers into their own hands. It's really about um, having the self-awareness to kind of know what it is that you need to learn and then tackling those challenges, right? If you don't have a degree of self-awareness, if you feel like, hey, I'm actually not good at everything, give me like your, you basically your high level. Uh, probably not a good fit, right? Probably not, not, not humble enough and um, not self-aware enough to understand where the flaws are. Um, and then a, a third one um, would probably be, at least within engineering management, probably some more technical ability. Um, I explain it to folks as like, did having retained technical ability as a leader is less about, you know, what the top question is saying, which is like, hey, you know, being technical as an agent manager isn't about you being able to jump in there and code with everybody else, right? And what being technical as a leader, as an agent leader means, is that you're able to converse, mentor, and help your most senior people so that they can become, basically become better engineers. Be, retaining that technical ability is what allows people, you know, like engineering leaders to attract and retain their senior engineering talent. And so that actually becomes an important part of the discussion because if you're unable to do that, it actually places a natural ceiling on basically your, your own growth trajectory and how, what kind of team you're able to attract and retain. So I would say, you know, off the top of my head, those are the three things that I'm thinking about when you're talking about engineering managers. Um, can you provide a good example of how to build an app? Um, I can set up the slides so you can look at how my students all these apps. Just put them online instead. Uh, and I think with that, uh, we are going to